Thank you and good afternoon. And if Stefan's still in the room, thank you for that piece you played earlier. I can really relate to the clowning around because every single school report I ever received had that phrase in it. So <laughs> thank you. I want to warn you a little bit first that, you know, I'm not going to give you any of the fluffy stuff. I'm just going to say it exactly how it is. And so if you're easily offended, then probably don't listen. Um, why am I going to do that? It's because you can avoid reality, but you can't avoid the consequences of avoiding reality. There's, is there a person in the room who'd know who said that quote? Anyone? If we were in New York, Singapore, Hong Kong, I reckon half the room would know, but that's all right. Has anyone in here heard of Kogan before that video played? Put your, put your hand up if you've heard of Kogan. And put your hand up if you've purchased from Kogan. Oh, only like 10 or 20% of the room. You may have just got a marketing manager fired. <laughs> well done, guys. Well done. <laughs> um, for those who haven't heard of Kogan, we're a consumer electronics manufacturer and retailer. It's a direct business model and it operates in, a, in the online environment. Kogan was started in my parents' garage with zero dollars capital. To date, we have had zero dollars of external funding, and we're set to turn over over $250 million this year, making us the largest online retailer in Australia. Kogan has also gone on to become Australia's only multinational consumer electronics brand, so things are going pretty well for us, and we're in a very exciting space at the moment. The reason we're in an exciting space is all thanks to the internet. As an entrepreneur or a businessman, we're in a, we're in, you know, a great place at the moment, all thanks to the internet. The great thing that the internet has done for business people is it's shattered barriers to entry in absolutely every single industry out there. Um, it's now easier than ever to start a business. It's now easier than ever to find your customers and communicate with your customers. And it's disrupting absolutely every industry out there. Look at journalism, for instance. 20 years ago, if you wanted to become a journalist, you had to get a job at one of the big newspapers, start working in the mail room, suck up to a lot of people, work your way up. Maybe 20 years later, someone would let you publish an article or two. These days, you can start a blog within half an hour. It'll cost you 20 bucks for a domain name and start publishing your thoughts. If people think that what you've got to say is interesting, all of a sudden you've got traffic to your site. If you've got traffic to your site, you've instantly got yourself a business. Some of the most read, read things out there these days are blogs. If you look at TechCrunch, Engadget, Huffington Post, um, even that Perez Hilton one in the US with all the... Um, all the trash talk and things like that, they're getting read more than the likes of the New York Times. So it's shattered the barriers to, to entry in journalism and anyone can now become a journalist. It's shattered the barriers to entry in music. 20 years ago, if you wanted to become a musician or start a band, you had to try and secure a gig at your local pub, then hope that a scout from one of the big Sony BMGs or Virgin uh, comes along or Universal is there on the night and it just happens to be the night that you put on a great performance and they happen to like you because they're having a great day and all of these things aligned and you might get yourself a contract. These days, just have a look at Justin Bieber and what's happened there. All you need to do is upload a video to YouTube. The same things happen in retail. Kogan couldn't have started 15 years ago. Uh, couldn't have started with zero dollar startup capital either. I would have needed millions of dollars of stock, millions of dollars of advertising budget, and showrooms all over the country. The internet has shattered all of these barriers. So as business people and entrepreneurs, we're operating in a very exciting space at the moment with opportunities all around us. All of that said, and with the internet creating all of these great opportunities, the core fundamentals of business haven't changed. The core fundamentals of what it takes to be an entrepreneur hasn't changed. Although some things have changed. Like when I was in high school writing computer programs, I was the geek. These days, if you've got an app, you're all of a sudden a rock star entrepreneur. So, um, you know, the way in which those things are perceived has changed, but the core fundamentals of business haven't changed. Now, 
what do I believe an entrepreneur is? Uh, to me, it's, it comes down to a couple of things. You're an inventor and an athlete in one. You're an inventor in the sense that you have to look at the marketplace and say, well, what doesn't exist at the moment that I can create, that I can invent? Whether it be cutting out the middlemen in a supply chain and making that more efficient or creating a new product like what Apple is doing. You have to invent something in the marketplace. The second bit of being an entrepreneur that a lot of people forget about is the athlete part. Once you have your invention, once you've thought of your idea, you've got to work your ass off to make it happen. And it takes a lot and a lot of work. The biggest misconception out there that I hear all the time is people saying like, oh, I've had enough working for someone, I'm just going to start my own business. Like, wow, do they not have any clue what they're about to get themselves into? I used to work 37 and a half hours a week when I worked for Accenture. I absolutely hated it and the time went really slow and all of that. These days, it's not uncommon for me to work 80 to 120 hours in a week. Uh, the time flies, I absolutely love what I'm doing, but I look back at my corporate world days and that was the cruisiest time ever with the least amount of work. And people complain also, they say, oh, you know, I just want to work for myself. When you're in business, you don't actually work for yourself. Like, I used to have one manager to report to at Accenture. When she took a day off, it was sweet, cruisy. Um, <laughs> now I report to 82 million consumers in Australia and the UK. So I'm working double as much as I've ever worked and reporting to 82 million more people than I've ever reported to. So um, that's where the working your ass off an athlete bit of entrepreneurship really comes into it. Uh, you know, you've got, uh, in today's day and age also, um, everyone wants to become an entrepreneur, which is great. I love business and I love seeing more and more people uh, getting into it. But I think the thing that a lot of people need to decide and realise is that it's not as cruisy as it's portrayed in, in some of the movies like Social Network and things like that. So. Um, you know, we've had this big trend of Facebook and then the social network movie came out and then everyone after it's, you know, yeah, I'm going to make an app, I'm going to be an entrepreneur. And I find all of that a little bit weird because, you know, like I watch Wimbledon and it's really exciting and great, but I don't sit there on the couch going, ah, that's it, I'm about to be a tennis player. Or, you know, if I see Spider-Man and it's really cool and then I'm like, whoa, that was so awesome, I'm going to be a spider. Um, <laughs> But for some reason, people watch social network and, and everyone wants to be an entrepreneur. One thing I found in common with business and entrepreneurship, every successful person I've spoken to has been hustling and running businesses since about the age of 10. So if you don't fit into that category and you want to start a new venture or something like that, it's going to be pretty tough, I think. Um, you know, you see also with all the legal shows, it's not just the Facebook movie, you see the, the legal shows out there uh, with the Ali McBeals and the Boston Legal and all of that, and you know that causes people to be like, yeah, 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 I want to be a lawyer. Then they get into uni and they see the books that they have to read, and they get a bit of a shock because, yeah, it's a, it looked a lot more glorious getting up on stage in the courtroom in the TV shows than it is in real life. But all of that aside, if I haven't demoralised you, say you're still saying that, yes, I do want to be an entrepreneur, I do want to start a business. There's, you're in for some tough work, but it's very, very rewarding and you get to change the world, which is a great thing. Now, I get a lot of people come to me and um, you know, they say, yeah, Ruslan, I've got a business idea I want to share with you, I've got a business I want to start, I've got a concept, and I make as much time as possible to speak to these people. And um, most of the ideas they share with me are pretty crap, but uh, a lot of the ideas are good, and you know that's, that's the bottom line of business. 97% of businesses fail in their first year. So yeah, I'm not going to give you the fluffy stuff and say, oh, there's so much great ideas floating out there. No, the majority of them are crap, but some are good. And the way that I evaluate a good idea is based on three principles that I judge it on. The first one is, what is your competitive advantage? 
You need a competitive advantage in a business, and that is what sets you apart from everyone else in the marketplace. What makes you better than all of your competitors? You know, and people can they think of some whack competitive advantages sometimes. Like, you know, uh, there's this group buying fad that we went through a couple of years ago, and you'd have people coming to me going, oh, yeah, I've got the best idea. I'm going to start a group buying website for left-handed golfers who also play tennis. You know, like, oh, and after you sell your first left-handed golf glove, what are you going to sell after that? Or they'll come, you know, Facebook is really big, so they're, oh, I've got, a, I've got a concept. I'm going to create a social network that's just for female uni students. Oh, I found this niche. I think, you know, they'll really love it. Like, no, that's not a competitive advantage. Uh, that's called a, a group on Facebook. Um, <laughs> So you need a competitive advantage in your business. The second thing you need is a value add to the consumer. Why would anyone transact with you? Why would someone buy from you? And you need to very clearly articulate that whether it's a product or a service, there needs to be a very clear value add to the consumer. And the third one is, does everyone think you're crazy? You need everyone or a lot of people you share your idea with to say that you're crazy because then that means you're challenging the status quo. Your idea is different enough to everything else in the marketplace to have a chance of succeeding. So, you know, if you answer yes to the first, or if you clearly articulate the first two questions and answer yes to the third one, then I think that, you know, you've got the potential for what would make a great startup and a great business. I want to... How much time have I got left? So I went two minutes, all right, then I went... I wanted to talk about some practical examples, but I can't. Um, the, the thing I want to talk about now is society around us and what's going on, what's going on around us at the moment. Um, being business people and potential entrepreneurs, uh, it's a pretty sad place right now because making profit is seen as an evil thing. Uh, if you look at any of our movies, the, entre the, you know, the entrepreneur or the businessman is the evil guy sitting in his penthouse running the pharmaceutical company smoking a cigar. The media don't portray business for what it actually is. And what it actually is, is every single product or service you interact with on a daily basis that enhances your life. There's a businessman or entrepreneur sitting somewhere behind that product, losing sleep, thinking, how do I make it better for the customer? It's thanks to the pursuit of profit and businessmen that we have medicines that we find in the pharmacy, uh, that we have you know, the phones that we're using, the laptops, the hotel that we're in, the light globes, being used. Absolutely, the car we drove here, the transport we used. There's entrepreneurs and businessmen sitting at the helm of all of that, innovating at all, thinking, how do we make the world a better place? That's what a businessman is, not what the media portrays with profit being evil and they're the cigar-smoking evil guy in the, at, on top of the penthouse. And, you know, we have the pursuit of profit to thank for that. It's the pursuit of profit that made Henry Ford make cars more affordable for everyone. It's the pursuit of profit that made Richard Branson make flights more affordable for everyone. It's the pursuit of profit that made the late and great Kerry Packer give us the great entertainment that is one day cricket. It's the pursuit of profit that enabled Bill Gates to change the world of computing and make our lives more efficient. It's the pursuit of profit for Steve Jobs that enabled my mum to send a text message for the first time ever. She was using a Nokia phone, I got her an iPhone, and then I asked her, like, what do you think? And she was like, oh, it's so awesome, I can send text messages. She couldn't work out how to do that on a Nokia. It's thanks to the pursuit of profit that we have all of these great things around us. And finally, I'd like to share the best piece of business advice I've ever received with you. And as I told you before, an entrepreneur is an inventor and an athlete in one. And this is very pertinent to the athlete part of it. So, you know, I speak to a lot of entrepreneurs. They come up with some ideas. Some are crap, some are good. Then I tell some of them, that's an awesome idea. Well done. It meets all that criteria I spoke about recently. Then I'll see that person a few months later and I'll be like, hey, mate, how are you going? How's your business going? And they'll look at me and they'll be like, what business? And the bottom line is that, you know, people are very good at talking the talk, but not many are good at walking the walk. 
and the athlete bit of it kicks in because Nike has been printing the best business advice ever on T-shirts for years. Just do it. Thank you. 